Hi, my name is Ike Ahmed. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto and a clinical practice in the Greater Toronto Area practicing glaucoma and anterosegment surgery. I'm pleased to share some thoughts about my, my perspective on the role of ultrasound biomicroscopy for anterosegment imaging. And here in our practice, we predominantly use UBM technology for glaucoma diagnostics, glaucoma surg surgery, and cataract IOL surgery. So starting with glaucoma diagnostics, I think we've all seen a gradual increase in the usage of anterosegment imaging. This is particularly helpful uh, for diagnosing borderline angles, screening glaucoma suspects, and those that were concerned for angle closure glaucoma. Of course, clinical gonioscopy, which is our gold standard, can be a useful tool. However, anterosegment imaging with UBM gives us a more objective and darkroom uh, assessment. Uh, we find it particularly useful for patients who have difficulty doing gonioscopy and those where we're trying to elucidate the actual mechanism. And if we think about mechanisms for narrow angles and angle closure, this includes pupil block, uh, the classic uh, pupil block uh, narrow angles or angle closure, plateau iris, uh, choroidal, uh, choroidal uh, uh, mechanisms including malignant glaucoma, as well as lens-related uh, pathologies. And one of the unique features of ultrasound, of course, is the ability to penetrate through the iris pigment epithelium. And of course, this is critical when it comes to diagnosing and assessing plateau uh, and diagnosing choroidal mechanisms, as well as lens-related pathologies. So by utilizing uh, anterosegment imaging with UBM, we're able to assess not only the presence of a narrow angle and objectively doing this in a darkroom setting, uh, but also assess the mechanisms at play. And that will often guide us to treatment whether laser iridotomy may be sufficient, whether we may need to do something further in terms of plateau mechanisms for plateau iris syndrome, or whether the lens may perhaps need to come out to ensure an adequate angle opening in terms of treatment. Um, in terms of surgical, uh, surgical intervention, uh, certainly with the uh, application assessing blebs, assessing tube patency can be very helpful. One of our areas of great interest is the uses of new devices, particularly in the angle, whether they're ab internal or ab external devices placed in the angle, for example, in the supracordial space, is the use of technologies like UBM that allow us to assess positioning uh, as well as potential mechanisms of flow. Uh, I think we'll see more and more application of ultrasound technology as we develop the field in terms of new glaucoma devices. Uh, finally, uh, the area of cataract IOL technology is a growing area in terms of imaging. And currently, of course, our standard technologies are typically biometry, ultrasound, or uh, optical as well as keratometry and I think more and more we're seeing the usage of assessment of capsular bag size as an important variable in terms of IOL selection particularly with accommodated lenses so this is an area that we've been continuing to look and assess capsular bag positioning and sizes to assess perhaps those patients that may benefit most or may perhaps not benefit as much as much from certain accommodated lenses uh, in our practice specializing in complicated uh, surgery certainly looking for pathology like zonular dialysis Pseudoxfoliacea syndrome, zonular uh, uh, presence or absence, uh, greatly facilitated with the use of UBM technology, allowing us to plan uh, this plan surgery accordingly. So in our practice, uh, you know, I think there's not a day that goes by that we're using uh, UBM technology for assessing the glaucoma patient, whether the established or whether the suspect, whether the preoperative or the postoperative patient uh, with pathology or without known pathology the ability to get a real true grasp of the entire anterior to middle segment uh, has become critical for us uh, in our clinical decision making. Uh, in cataract IOL, uh, the cataract IOL field, uh, as we've discussed, particularly in those patients who are concerned about pathology, and I think going forward getting a good handle in terms of the uh, cataract positioning as well as capsular bag size will perhaps play an important role when it comes to the selection of appropriate IOLs. I think one of the challenges with ultrasound technology traditionally has been some of the difficulties incorporating into clinical practice. And we've now had experience through you know, multiple generations and multiple platforms. Uh, one of the big steps forward was user interface. And I think with the Quantel of ESO linear 50 megahertz uh, system, we can still obtain excellent resolution but have a good clinical uh, interface. And that part is very important for our technicians. It allows rapid patient turnover and ease of use and quantification of specific uh, meridia of, uh, of imaging. One of the advantages that we found has really helped us has been the clear scan bag balloon type system that uh, Tom Prager has innovative, innovatively developed. Uh, and this system has really cleaned up the procedure, allowed us to do these procedures uh, very quickly and efficiently uh, and with very little discomfort. Um, and I think those, those developments, both on the Quantel system 
and with the application of the ClearScan uh, system has really made this an effortless uh, process for our patients and our technicians.